Welcome to Enterprise Search with Apache Solar. This is section four, querying the index. In this section, we'll discuss using Lucene query syntax to access documents through Solar, the schema of response formats received from Solar, additional parameters that can alter responses for identical searches, and the robust Dismax query parser. Now that we understand how to add documents to our index, it's a good idea to learn how to query it. First off, it's important that we remove the iPod modified.xml file that we created in the last video. Next, let's add all of the different XML files in the example docs folder by calling java-jar post.jar on wildcard.xml. You'll note that this actually ends up committing these changes for all of the different XML files. Now, let's do a wildcard query and see what's in our index. We have 21 documents, and it's a variety of electronics-related documents that include things about iPods, connectors, hard drives, various other things. So, now that we have this sort of data, let's see if we can't just type something in and see something show up. So, let's type in iPod. We know that there are documents that say iPod. So, of course, we have a bunch of different results. And these all have to do with iPod-related things. Now, Solar uses the Lucene query syntax. However, if you don't specify a field, and add a colon at the end before your query term, it will perform some default behaviors that it's worth taking a look at. So, if you want to take a look at your solar comp folder and take a quick peek at the solarconfig.xml, you can go to your select request handler and you'll see that there is a default field being specified, which is the text field. Now, if we look at schema.xml and go all the way to the bottom, you'll note that there are a number of copy field parameters that are basically saying, take these fields and copy all of the text onto them. So now, when we enter any old search term, we're actually searching a bunch of different joined fields. However, maybe we only want to find results in the category. So let's say we want to find something in the connector category. Well, that didn't work. How about in the name field? Surely something said connector. So where was it? It was in cat. So let's go back and try again using cat colon connector. That works. So it's very important that you know whatever you're searching against actually has the kind of values you're looking for. So, another thing that you can do when using the Lucene query syntax is perform uh, disjunctive queries. So, cat connector or name connector or price is, let's say, 60. But we got at least Two results here. Going back to the price topic, we actually support something called range queries. So, if I wanted to say anything between 0 and 100, I would use square brackets, capital letters 2, and the two values on either side of 2. So now we have all documents that match a price of 0 to 100 for the price field. 
we can also say price 0 to 50. Note before we had seven documents, and now we have five. So two of those documents were actually greater than $50. Another thing that's worth noting is that you can put in parentheses different values, and that's treated as non-proximity but same field queries. So if I do this, we don't get anything. But if I do this, we do get something. This is because the cat field happens to be of a string value and is therefore not analyzed. Now going back to our disjunctive query, we have things that match iPod or things that match hard drive. Now is a good time to introduce you to the concept of boosting. Note that the iPod one was pretty far down on the list. If I give it a boost of 10, let's see what happens. Now it goes to the top. Boosting is one way that we can forcibly manipulate the way relevance works. Now we understand some basic approaches in querying the index. There is a great number left to understand, but with these basics, we can really grow off.